Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassett, your host of the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14. It's election season, and we're having interviews with all the local candidates here in Wicomico County and elsewhere. Today, we have a state Senate candidate in the House, Johnny Mouts from Talbot County. Welcome, Johnny. Greg, it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. So you're going for the uh, state Senate. You're in the Del House of Delegates right now for District 37B. Uh, you're going for state Senate, uh, District 37. 37 is such a huge district, you know, and you're a, a, a St. Michael's guy. Correct. But we know you down here. You're down here a lot. Mm -hmm. What's it like trying to cover a district that big? Well, I tell you, that's one of the most nuanced part of this job that most people don't re realize is that the district extends all the way from the tip of northern tip of Tillman Island all the way down to Tyask, and it wow. stretches over to the Delaware border. They've just changed our district. So if we were confused before, I think voters this coming cycle are going to have a couple, there will be many voters who will be scratching their heads saying, who is this person? Right. That's our job right now is to get the message out. Now, a lot of our district has shifted north, so there are portions of Wacomico County that have been cut out of the district, and par portions of Caroline County have been added to the district, but it's the second largest district in the state. It covers four counties, and it's one of those things that it really is like the bread and butter of the Eastern Shore, it, the, where the primary industries seem to be watermen and farmers. Correct, agriculture, and I, I, I bring all those together under the, under the realm of agriculture, but agriculture is king in our district. It is a strong industry, and I think now more than ever, people are starting to realize how important agriculture is to society in general. So what's going on out there in the waterman world, in the, in the farmer world? What are you doing to help protect and help farmers? Well, uh, you know, right now, um, agriculture is, um, is struggling just like everyone else. Uh, the cost of goods, the cost of services um, is just continuing, is continuing to accelerate and accelerate. Agriculture is a, um, a business model that's set up and it's a, a pretty steady business model. It's a high work environment. Um, uh, and it's uh, um, one that continues um, with diligence and, and, and expectations. But right now, a lot, a lot of people in the agricultural community are struggling because they can't predict what their input costs are going to be to manage their output costs or output uh, gains to balance all that out. And that, that is, um, um, it, that's a very complicated equation, um, certainly in poultry, um, the cost of the grain, uh, and then uh, having uh, workers, and then having a market, and then being able to transport the, transport the goods to market. Um, if you go into other forms of agriculture with like the vegetables and the melons and things like that, they have the exact same problems. It's a little more uh, nuanced again with, with seafood because uh, therein comes a number of different layers of government regulation that have uh, a tremendous impact. And seafood and the, and the health of the bay that's a delicate balance, and it's a critical one because the bay impacts everyone's lives in our district. The Midshore is a powerhouse in the state of Maryland. We produce, we manufacture, um, we are um, uh, not a service-oriented community. We do have some services, but we are a producing, manufacturing um, economy here. Yeah, it's, it, to me it's like the epitome of the Eastern Shore, that mid-shore district um, has all the traits that you think of for the Eastern Shore. Sure, sure. And, you know, you really see those price of, uh, the price of goods being driven by the, the cost of oil. And, you know, um, um, a lot of these products that many people don't necessarily associate with petroleum, um, they're starting to associate with them now because they see the prices in different aspects um, um, increase dramatically. Um, and, and, and you'll see that in the grocery store. I mean, right now, inflation in the grocery store is exceeding inflation in other areas of, uh, of the economy. We've had six months of 8% of inflation, and, um, and that's affecting everyone. Right. Now, we, we, inflation is kind of a worldwide problem. We think of it as a national problem to be addressed on a national level. What can someone who's in the state legislature do about local inflation? Well, first you have to recognize what's going on and that people are having to, to pay more they're not able to save, uh, their burdens are heavier. So the first, uh, the first pillar is, you know, don't create any unneeded costs or any new costs for your, for your constituents, especially those that are going to be struggling the most, and that's middle, middle class all the way down. Um, uh, the second is, is where are these costs coming from and how do we control those costs? And you can look right to the government to find ways to reduce costs through different types of, 
of regulations that either aren't necessary or can be um, made more efficient um, to help get goods, to help the production of goods and to help uh, with the, uh, um, I guess you call it the transport or the goods processing uh, system so they get to the consumer at the least cost price uh, so to, to help control what, what the consumers are paying. We're going to have a new governor uh, this term. Um, you're a Republican. It looks like the leader right now would, would probably be the Democrat, Wes Moore, might he's favored to win right now. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be like working across the party lines with a new governor? Well, um, that'll be a completely different environment. Um, you know, it's funny you bring that up because, uh, you know, Maryland is a one-party state. I think if you, anytime you have a candidate um, on the Republican side with a conservative platform up against uh, a Democratic candidate, that Republican candidate is going to be um, uh, the underdog, right. a significant underdog. Um, the new administration is going to have all new priorities. Um, they're going to have new agendas. And the first four years are going to have a huge, um, uh, a, a huge obstacle. And, and the Hogan administration, Governor Hogan, has been very kind to the Eastern Shore. But through his first four years, they have to fill all the positions in government and take control of government. Generally, in her second term is when a governor's in the new administration will have the ability to implement new policies and, and things of that nature. I think our number one objective with the new administration is to get them to come to the shore to expose them to the shore and help them understand what our priorities are um, and how that administration can uh, can help us succeed. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the people that are put in those key positions, the first positions that are filled are the people we need to get over here. We need to talk to them uh, and expose them and explain to them and be available to them so they can be of, of help to us. Right. Now, in our Eastern Shore delegation, which you led for a long time, um, mm -hmm. Our only Democrat is Sharice Sample Hughes from Wicombe County. Uh, everyone else is Republican, but mm -hmm. it seemed like Larry Hogan really liked us and was able to work. You were able to work through him to get stuff for us. Well, you know, on the delegation, we are all East, Eastern Shore representatives, so the R's and the D's come off when we get together, and we can talk, you know, about things in a separate uh, platform than kind of what happens in Annapolis. And Cherie has been a vital part of our delegation. Um, I've worked with her hand in glove. I've worked with Delegate Sample Hughes uh, hand in glove over the past eight years. And she's been a friend and a, and, a, um, and a colleague to help with some very important legislation, broadband, um, health care, all sorts of different things. Uh, she is going to be critical um, to our delegation, especially if there's a Westmore administration. Um, she understands um, the issues on the shore. She's open and communicates with all the members. Um, but she'll be a, 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 a very important part of how we communicate and how we expose the, the, the Westmore administration to the needs and the priorities of the Eastern Shore. Now, she also is the Speaker Pro Tem, right. which is a position that holds a lot of weight and a lot of influence in Annapolis. And she is a conduit for us with the uh, leadership in Annapolis because Annapolis is a heavily democratically controlled um, uh, legislative body, and, and she does a uh, she is our uh, she is our representative in many ways to have um, a, a, a priorities and um, other matters uh, for our delegation um, to make sure that they're protected there, and uh, and so she's been she's been a, a huge asset to us, and I, I'm I'm grateful for the help that she's been able to provide not only to me but but to the shore. You know, there was a constitutional amendment that was recently enacted that changes the way the budget is done in Maryland. And they took the powers that were reserved for the governor have now been expanded to the General Assembly. That wasn't something I was in favor of because it provided fiscal responsibility. However, that's the world we're in now. Um, and so uh, Delegate Sample Hughes is going to be a very important um, uh, uh, connection with uh, the General Assembly and also uh, um, with the um, with the new administration. What's it like for small businesses now and how can you be a more of an advocate for them? How can you continue to be an advocate for them? Well yes I'm a small businessman I grew up in a small business I operate a small business and all small businesses are hurting right now. Um, there is no silver bullet to help small businesses weather the storm that they're enduring. Certainly focusing on the cost of living and inflation is going to be something uh, to help businesses. But they're hurting 
both in the pocketbook as far as uh, buying goods, they're hurting in, in, the, in, the, in the Department of Finding Labor, um, and, and they're also very concerned about any new regulations or any new taxes that could be imposed upon them. Um, standing up, trying to prevent taxes, new costs, fees, things like that will be a top priority. Uh, I'm, I'm a member of a, of a work group that's trying to um, instill some new, new policies to try to bring workers into the workforce. Um, that's going to be an important um, factor moving forward. And, uh, and simply making sure that, um, I'm, that the businesses know how to reach me, to be available to them, to connect them with whatever uh, resources might be out there uh, is also a priority. So when you are a senator, if you're elected, what kind of senator do you want to be? Well, you know, it's funny because we were talking uh, about this a little bit earlier, but, you know, the national rhetoric is just out of control. Um, you know, you're either good or you're bad, and people are viewing politicians with a lot of anxiety right now. And I use that word politician lightly, not as a critical thing, but, you know, you need to get elected, and that's kind of the, the art that you get into to be elected. I, I grew up on the Eastern Shore. This is my home. Um, over the past eight years in the House of Delegates, I've tried to focus on issues that affect the daily lives of our constituents, and those have always been my priority. And as a senator uh, for District 37, that will always be my priority, um, not only to focus on those issues, but to be available to the constituents, all of the constituents, uh, to help them um, either understand uh, the problems and what the government can or can't do, or to come up with a solution for them. Um, uh, along those lines, you know, polit politicking, ha politicking occurs when you're trying to get elected. You know, after you're elected, I think it's very important to be candid and clear with constituents about how things uh, are, the realities of things, and, that's, and that sort of um, uh, um, uh, discussion to me is very important and I will be a, a very clear voice of reason. Um, those are my goals. I think that's the the uh, cornerstone of public service is to be there for constituents, to be clear with constituents, and to make sure that you have answers for them. All right, give us your one minute pitch. Why should the voters of District 37 elect Johnny Mounts as their next state senator? Well, the one, the one minute pitch is straightforward. I think pretty much I already gave it to you. I grew up on the Eastern Shore. How I wound up in public service is a long story. I can't really explain how it happened, but it did happen, and it's been an incredible honor for me to serve in the House of Delegates. It's been a challenge. I've given everything I've, I've had to give uh, to try to serve our constituents, but also to do good things for the Eastern Shore and for our district. And as our senator, um, I pledge to do the exact same thing, to continue to do that for the, for the next four years, to show up, to be present, um, and, to, and to answer the call wherever and however I can be helpful. Um, and to be clear, you don't have a magic wand when you're in the General Assembly, but you can show up and you can, and you can respond to constituents and help them any way that you can. Um, uh, you know, the future, we're at a crossroads. There's a lot of transformation that's occurring. And, um, you know, transformation can be good or it can be bad. And I want to make sure that it's good for us here on the shore. He's Johnny Mouths. He's running for State Senate District 37. He's from St. Michael's, and we're thrilled he had time to be here today. Johnny, thank you for being here. Greg, it is always good to be with you. Thank you. And uh, may God bless you real good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. Be sure and watch all the candidate interviews on the PAC-14 YouTube page.